perfect. Hey, welcome to HPHG with Miss V. That's me. <laughs> so today we're going into our first unit, unit one, which is thinking geographically. And we're going to talk a little bit about maps and the introduction into maps, um, what maps are for, what they're used for, but particularly what we use them for in human geography. Okay. And we're going to actually be as geographers and learn to uh, understand how we use maps to analyze themes or patterns and processes that happen as humans interact with the earth. Okay, so enough talking, let's get started, right? All right, so where are we going with all of this? Where are we headed to today, right? So on my little compass rose, this is what we're gonna do all the time, but I wanna make sure that I note to you each time that there are guided notes and I must, must implore that you use the guided notes in order to get the best effect from this video lesson because the more that you're able to take great notes and have these notes available for you, the better you'll be able to do on your tests, your quizzes. Also for the AP exam, you will have something tangible and ready to knock out the AP, your AP exam um, next year right? So please make sure that you take uh, the guided notes and follow along with me and you'll get going, right? We'll make sure you get to the destination of learning about human geography, right? So today we're going to talk about what maps are and how we use maps. Later on, we're going to get into part two and talk about how we assess patterns in maps and that's a review of the entire lesson, okay? So the essential questions is always questions that we ask ourselves when it comes to each unit. Um, in this unit, the questions that we're basically asking is why do we study these patterns and relationships as it relates to places on the earth? Why is it so important? And how are we going to be able to use maps to help us discover these patterns, right? And the maps that we analyze and the data that we study in terms of relationships and patterns that happen on the earth, how can we use that information to help us solve complex problems that happen in our world? All of that, we're going to be asking, asking those questions and later on, we're going to answer them as well, okay, as we go through this unit. So first off, let's start with the first, our first destination what is a map, right? As you see here, a map is a two-dimensional model of the Earth and a por or a portion of it, okay? We use maps all of time to navigate to certain places, right? Um, or we try to figure out where certain things are located on the Earth, okay? And the process of map making is called cartography. Cartographers create maps or they design maps, okay? And that's how we're able to figure out where things are on the earth, okay? Are all maps accurate? That's a good question. Are all maps accurate? Let's find out. Let's take a look at this map. Is this an accurate depiction of the continents on earth? Take a minute, or take a couple seconds to take a uh, and look at it. All right, we're back. <laughs> now, I'm gonna give you a few more minutes to take a look at it, or a few seconds to take a look at this and see if it changes your mind, right? Let's look at this. This is the continent of Africa, and this is Greenland. This is not a continent, right? The continent of Africa is the second largest continent on the earth. Keeping that in mind is this 
an accurate depiction of the continents on the earth. Right, more than likely not, okay? We know that Africa is huge, right? So most maps, most two-dimensional maps, two-dimensional maps are distorted, okay? Or have distortion, which means that the map the size and the distance or the shape of the land masses have some form of an error, okay? They're not accurate. The only accurate depiction of a map in this case would be a globe because a globe is three dimensions, right? Three dimensional, you can see it all the way around and it has the best representation of what the land masses are actually like. However, it's very difficult to flatten or project right a map on a two-dimensional or flat piece of surface like such as a paper or you know or some canvas or something like that so that's why maps most maps are distorted okay now there are four properties of maps as you see here the shape you have the size the distance and the direction shape of course is your line masses right how it's shaped and of course you have the size how large it is we have distance, the measurement between those different land masses, and direction, of course, if you remember, if you remember from elementary, never eat soggy waffles, right? Never eat, never eat soggy waffles, right? So north, south, east, west, and of course you have northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, right? So all of those directional degrees account for some accuracy of direction, right? So map projections, there are at least 70 something of different types of map projections, but we're not getting into all of those because there's too much, <laughs> just seem too much, right? Eh. Um, so <laughs> what we're actually going to get into is a few of them that I, you definitely will need to know, right? Okay, so first you have the Gauss-Peters projection. As you see here, it's an equal area or equivalent because it accurately represents the actual area of the landforms, right? So the area is accurate, but the shape is distorted. Africa don't look like this, right? It's distorted, it's not that elongated. It doesn't look like that, but the actual area is equivalent, it's equal, because it's accurate, okay? The area of Australia here is accurate, okay? The area of North America here is accurate, but the shape is very distorted, okay? Very, very distorted. Also here, this is a Mercator projection, okay? So in the previous projection, of course, we talked about the area being accurate, but in the Mercator projection, it's conformal because it actually represents the shape of the landform. So this is actually how the landform's shape the shape of each of these landforms look. However, the area and the sizes are drastically distorted, right? Especially here in the poles. So as you see here, Greenland is totally humongous compared to Africa, which is like this little tiny, 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 tiny piece of something compared to Greenland. Totally inaccurate, right? We know that Africa is way bigger. As you can see here in the previous projection, it's much bigger in, in area, right? Equidistant projections maintain distance, meaning that it's equal distance, uh, equivalent distance, right? But it distorts shape and areas like a lot of like uh, the Mercator projection, right? So the distance here is accurate. You know, if we take from one point to another, the distance is relatively accurate but the shapes are distorted, okay? The Robinson projection, all four properties, remember we just discussed the properties, shape, size, distance, and direction, all properties are slightly distorted so that one property isn't drastically distorted. So as you see here in the polls, um, it's, it's slightly distorted, the, the size and the shape are distorted a little bit, but it's not drastic as it was in the Peters projection or the Mercator projection. And as you see here, the, it's equal in distance, but it's not accurate, not 100% accurate in its distance. 
So everything, all of the properties here are distorted, all right? Now say this five times fast. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm not saying it five times. I'm gonna say it once. <laughs> as emotional projections. There we go. <laughs> so as emotional projections are flat plane constructed maps of the hemisphere. So basically, what you're looking at here is if think of yourself as if you were out in space and you are looking down on the North Pole, right? <laughs> That's basically what. It is it's as if you were looking down directly on the North Pole, right? These are the great circles. So remember, if you remember back in your elementary or middle school days where we talk about Trap of Cancer, Trap of Capricorn, um, and those uh, latitudes, lines of latitudes, those are your circles here, okay? And this outer circle is the equator, okay? So the directions here are accurate because we can see north, south, right, east, west. Those are accurate, okay? But of course, it's flat. So a lot of the shapes and landforms are going to be distorted, okay? Hey, so I know this is a lot to chomp on, so take a few minutes, get a break. It's time to gather yourself and we're going to head right back into the lesson or the topic for today.